So there's a terrible thing that engineers do, and I want you never to allow engineers to do it again. They tell you, don't worry, it'll be done in a month or two months or six months or a year. Don't worry, we're 90% done. And they're 90% done. Yeah, Lucas is laughing. They're 90% done for a nice long time, right? And the problem is that they don't show you as they're making their elephant. They say, look, it's going to be a wonderful elephant, but you're not going to see it. Eventually, there'll be an elephant here, but you don't get to see it. And then, ta-da! And it's not an elephant. It's not the elephant you wanted. Here's what should happen. I'm going to explain exactly how to do this, but I wanted to make this point before saying anything else. Your engineers already know how, and the engineers in the room, you know that I'm right. So you argue with me if you think I'm wrong, but you know I'm right. They know how to build software in tiny, tiny pieces. So at every stage, there's something that makes it look one more, one more stage like an elephant. And they could do that for you, but they're not. And there's some good reasons. I'm going to explain why. It's not because they're evil. It's because they probably don't believe you. But they can do that, and they should do that. And if they did, you would know whether your engineers are doing anything. So that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. Because I want to help you think about how you, if you're an engineer, can make your team more profitable. If you're a uh, customer experience person, I was talking to such a person earlier today, um, how you could help the engineers to help you show the incredible profit that you can provide. And if you own a company or you run a company or you're on the executive team of a company, how you can um, make sure your engineers are accountable for their profit. That's what I'm going to talk about. Um, and uh, uh, the key thing that I'm going to emphasize is that your engineers already know how to do this. Um, so let me give you an example. Um, anybody know what a color picker is? Uh, great. Go ahead, Christine. Tell me. Go ahead. What's a color? Yeah. Yeah, it's a tool, picks a color, right? So I had a client who um, wanted to build a color picker into their product, and they had uh, they had graphs, um, and they wanted to be able to change the color of the graphs. They wanted to give that power to their customers. And one thing they could have done is this way I was describing before. Oh, yes, we're going to build the color picker. Don't worry, it's going to be here. Don't worry, it's a wonderful color picker. You're really going to like it. Ta-da, here it is. They didn't want to do that. So I said, great, we can build this the elephant carpaccio way. Okay, now who knows what carpaccio is? Go. Very thin sliced meat. Very thin sliced meat. It's so thin that when you hold it up to the light, you can see through it, right? Those are extremely thin slices. This is an idea, so I'm going to write this down. Elephant carpaccio. And it's an idea from a guy named Alastair Coburn. The CK is silent. It's one of those weird English words with silent letters in it. Um, and Alistair uh, wanted to explain how he could build software, not in the hide it on the whiteboard way, but in a way so that everybody could see value every hour as he was building it. I'm going to tell you how to do it every day. All right. So I'm not going to go as far as, as, as Alistair. Um, he's been doing this for 40 years and I've only been doing it for 20. But the key thing is, that he said, when you do these tiny slices, when you do these tiny pieces, I'm about to explain it in this color picker example for you. What you want to do is make sure that each piece looks like the elephant, just like we did when we made our, our, our drawing all together. So what did my client do? And you'll just listen, listen out for how this keeps looking more like an elephant. They said, well, we want to show to our beta users, we want to show some of the users who use these graphs, what the color picker will be like. So what could we do? What's the smallest thing we could do that we could release to our customers today? So not next week or next month or next year, but what could we do today? And they said, well, you know, the simplest thing we could do is we could put a button that says pick color and then stop. Now, you might imagine if you're thinking like an engineer, you say, well, I need the API and I need the back end and I need the data. No, they didn't do that. They just made the button. And they're doing this for new customers. Very good point. And so they don't want to anger anybody. That's fine. But for their beta customers who were ready for things that didn't quite work, they had a button that did not work. You click the button, nothing happened. No color picker comes up. And uh, they put that out. And some people started reporting problems. They said, the color picker doesn't work. And they said, great. 
what did you want to do with the color picker? It's not working today. Don't worry. Just tell us, how are you going to use it? And then when they actually got some answers, they said, oh, we know kind of how people are going to use this. We have the button in the wrong place. We need to move it. So that was the first slice, right? Very, very thin piece of meat. Um, some of you in product might know this as the painted door technique, right? You go up to a wall and you paint a door and you see if people try to open it. Well, it's just painted on the wall, but you know that people would like a door there, right? So they said, all right, people want a color picker. We've talked to some, they identified themselves. They clicked the button. Okay, we know they're interested. Then they got a JPEG, right? A picture. It was a picture of a color picker. Many of you probably have this picture. I'm not going to try to draw it. I, I will do a terrible job. But you know, it's a kind of a circle and it has colors kind of fade into each other and you tap it and, and you get colors and you say, say, okay, I hope you know what it is. If not, Google color picker, which is what they did because they went and got a picture of a color picker and they uh, put that picture up so that it popped up when you click the button. And they didn't do anything else. They released that. So then customers, of course, click the button, something happened, they got a picture. And then they, the, you know, my very smart client went and talked to those people who had clicked it and they watched them click it. And they said, what are you trying to do with this? Well, I want to click this over here and then I want to save it there and I want to apply it to this graph. Slow down, wait, tell me about that again, right? So that second slice gave them more information about what the customers wanted. This was great, they could do this in one day, right? So the iteration speed here is very, very fast. Then the third thing they did is they said, okay, let's make the color picker and it'll actually function a bit. Like when you click a color, it'll show blue or it'll show green. It'll show the pick color that you clicked. It won't actually save it. It won't change anything, but you will have the color. Again, you go through the same user research cycle. You can do all of this in one day, right? So the key thing about this is the slices are so thin that number one, you don't lose track of what the engineers are doing. Because if you ever want to know, you say, what did you release yesterday? And they said, well, what I released was this little piece right here. This is what I did. And you say, oh my God, that's the wrong thing. And that's what you want to hear, right? Because you want to get the feedback. Or they say, this is great. Can I use this? Well, not quite. But tomorrow's slice, you can actually, and this is with the fourth slice that my client did, you can go to the actual color picker and pick a color and apply it to a graph, which was the original use case, right? And it took them four slices. So it took them four days. So what happens when you do this? Well, the first thing that happens is people out there and all the people who raise their hands the second time, all the people who aren't engineers, and you kind of wonder, what are those mysterious magicians? What are they doing? What's happening? What's hap where are they doing? What, what, what is coming out? Every single day, you can see what's happening. Imagine that world just for a minute, because then what you can do is you can tell them whether they're doing the right thing or not. And I'm going to talk about that again in a minute. And another thing that happens, and engineers will really like this, is you don't have to do any more estimates. Oh my God, I don't have to estimate. I don't have to do a backlog planning session and story points and stuff. Some of you are smiling, you know what this is like. And um, suddenly that predictability becomes less important because you can be accountable every day. I can say a lot more about that if that's interesting, but I just wanna make sure everybody hears there's benefits for everybody if we can become much more accountable every day. And if our slices can be really small. 